semi-arid regions like Somaliland are increasingly affected by land degradation. This is driven by a combination of climate change and unsustainable land use practices. These challenges pose a real threat to local communities and their development. As part of the Regreening Africa project, the Economics of Land Degradation Initiative conducted a case study in Somaliland to assess the effects of land degradation on the livelihoods of pastoral and agro-pastoral communities in Boch and Baligubadle areas as study sites. In back, this site where I am now is uh, one of the sites that were selected. It's called Boch. It's a prime grazing uh, land uh, which supports the livelihoods of a uh, large number of uh, semi-nomadic households living in the area. The site has been affected by a land degradation of a long period, going back to 1950s, when the first signs of degradation was seen. Boch Valley is one of the places where we can observe the impact of land degradation, but also effects of possible mitigation options to address the underlying drivers of this environmental change. The Boch Valley in the garan Lebach Highlands is characterized by grass and sparse shrub vegetation and gently sloping land. Historically, most of the Boch Valley was part of a buffer zone for a large protected national grazing reserve. It was only allowed to enter the area in severe drought years, where there was little or no alternative pasture available elsewhere in the region. Unfortunately, this land management practice stopped in 1990. Since then, the Boch Valley has been used as an open all-season grazing area by local and surrounding communities. The unregulated use of the land has led to the gradual desertification and erosion of the valley. Climate change has contributed to the land degradation, with the weather changing during the last decades, as experienced by the lead ranger, Ibrahim Mohamed Bokhore. There has been a significant change in weather pattern in the region in the past four decades. The precipitations increasingly vary a lot in frequency and intensity from year to year. We may have an intense and prolonged rain season in a particular year and none in the next year or two years, resulting in severe droughts. The overall trend is towards a much drier and hotter climate. The natural recovery capacity of the land and therefore the ecological balance between different species is increasingly disrupted, leading to a loss of species. On the one hand, more frequent and severe droughts have disrupted the natural cycles of vegetation recovery, leading to a significant decline of indigenous plant species. On the other hand, unsustainable land use practices such as illegal land enclosures have placed great pressure on the remaining shrinking communal agropastoral lands, which has resulted in severe overgrazing and soil erosion. The loss of land cover has been further accelerated by deforestation driven by the commercial production of charcoal, which stems from the growing demand for cooking energy from urban populations. The changes are clearly visible. The tree roots that were once one meter or more below the land surface are now exposed due to rapid soil erosion. All in all, the combination of intensification of land use, climate change and weak environmental governance all undermine the sustainability of the traditional pastoral livelihoods in the region. The Somaliland government, however, is now aware of the problem. The climate and social change we observed in recent decades will no doubt lead to profound changes in the way we live, as livestock is the backbone of economy and livelihoods. Live in cities is supported by the traditional pastoralism, which is in turn contingent upon the quality of rangelands. Without healthy and productive rangeland, our economy and livelihoods are no longer sustainable. The second study site of the ELD initiative's work in Somaliland is Baligubadle, which is an agro-pastoral zone with a higher population density. Currently, there is no land tenure law governing land use. Existing customary rules are too weak to safeguard communal pasture land in the region. People fenced off much of rangeland for private use, preventing access for communal livestock grazing and other uses. As a result, this region has seen the widespread use of illegal enclosures as well. 
Again, frequent droughts linked to climate change and social changes in the past three decades have forced a major shift in rural households from traditional pastoralism toward a more urban lifestyle. This has led to the expansion of existing village centers and the emergence of new ones over the past 30 years. Consequently, the remaining common pasture land is also severely degraded due to overgrazing and urban sprawl. Forty years ago, rangeland in the region were communal grazing land that supported livelihoods of local pastoral communities and wildlife. The introduction of private land enclosures in the context of a changing climate has dramatically altered that equilibrium. Not only have enclosures forced livestock onto the little remaining communal grazing areas, a source of constant social conflict, but you no longer see the wildlife that used to roam around these parts. Land degradation also creates cultural disruptions. Whilst pastoralism still remains an integral part of way of life, this may not be the case in future. The next generations may not experience the nomadic pastoralism that underpinned the livelihoods of their forefathers. Will they migrate to the cities or venture abroad in search of a better life? The socio-cultural and economic implications of such rapid changes are enormous. Serious social and political debates are necessary to discuss how we can avert these worrying trends and address the effects of underlying climate and land use changes. Political conversations have already taken place and are now leading to concrete action. The Somaliland Ministry of Environment and Rural Development has carried out some restoration measures in four main rangelands. These measures have had a noticeable impact, leading to a significant improvement in quality pasture and reduced soil erosion. But more is needed to significantly avert the trend of land degradation. There is an urgent need to strengthen research and environmental policy making in the region to address these environmental challenges more sustainably. The ELD initiative has recognized this need and recently conducted a training for a group of local researchers and public officials. The training enabled the group to use ELD's 6 plus 1 valuation approach to show that sustainable land management pays off and is the necessary basis for economic development in the region. The case study that has been done here uh, with the purpose of uh, building analytical capacity of local uh, researchers and uh, public policy analysis have highlighted actually when they say uh, an effective uh, land management option you can address the land degradation and reduce the speed with which land degradation progresses. Scaling these land management options in the region is also the objective of the ICRAF-led Regreening Africa project, which aims to reverse land degradation on one million hectares across several countries in sub-Saharan Africa. ELD's approach of economic valuation can support better policy-making and community action. By empowering the community to find a solution and take action, the ELD method increases the chances of success to achieve sustainable land management in Somaliland. <laughs>